is uh, Frank Montano out by uh, Eagle Bay. This is April. I'm uh, April. This is August twenty second, nineteen ninety five. An audition test. Okay, Frank. Uh, Bujo. Anakwari and Dijinakas. Maskaba Khan and Duan Jaba. Nagise and Dodem. My name is Cloud. My Indian name, my spirit name. I'm from uh, Red Cliff, which is where we're standing right now. And the clan that I belong to is the Eagle Clan. And I want to tell you a little bit today about uh, one of the important parts of my life. Uh, I learned about our traditional ways through all my years that I've been living here. And then uh, a number of years ago that I've kind of lost count of, I went out in a traditional way and I fasted. And uh, these uh, these things came to me, and one of them was the, uh, the flute. It's called Bipiguan in our language, the traditional flute. And I searched around and learned how to make them. And since I've used them, and uh, I learned those uh, stories about them, they've become very important. And uh, <clears throat> with my uh, teaching and stuff that I do, I, I've... Uh, kind of incorporate them into that and they're very uh, powerful in, in the spiritual sense and they help help me and they help people when I use them. And the stories about how they came to us, there's a number of different stories about how they were given to our tribe of people. And uh, one of them talks about a young boy and, and, and how he used it to relate to the young girls. Because in the old days, of course, the young boys and girls weren't allowed to talk with each other. They were forbidden to talk with each other in the villages. And, and as that happened, this one boy, they said, like this girl, and he went out in the woods and was sad. And then uh, he was sleeping there, and this bird came to him and taught him how to make these flutes. So that's one of the stories about how the flutes came. And uh, it's really important to, to always associate those traditional things uh, with uh, spirituality, your spiritual side. And the flutes are part of that. And uh, in my travels that I have been on, you know, and, and the places I go into Canada and Minnesota and all the other states and into Japan and Germany, I found that the most important part of uh, the trips that I take is when I play the flute and the people hear that, that flute and when I tell the stories about our, our traditional way. And my father, who lived in Mexico when he was young, he was an entertainer as he grew older and he made his own instruments also, guitars and uh, other instruments when he traveled around. And uh, he was what we call a wetback and he migrated to the United States in the time of Pancho Villa. And uh, met my mother who was the Ojibwe in, in the city of Milwaukee. And I spent a number of my years in the city of Milwaukee after probably about seven years old. Lived with Italian people. I lived with <coughs> people of uh, Mexican and Puerto Rican and all these different types of people I grew up with down there. And these were real important uh, parts of my, my life, learning about all these different uh, types of people and living in the cities but also getting back to the reservation and becoming a part of what my mother's side of the family was, and that was the Ojibwe nation, and learning about my own history and starting to live 
in the traditional way, in the sense, and to be in these places like we're standing in here out in the woods on the Red Cliff Reservation, and to communicate with the spirits that are around, the spirits of the trees, Matik, the spirit that this flute came from, a tree, and uh, to understand how they relate with us in all the different uh, parts of our life and the reasons why the flutes are made in these circles, why this is a circle and why these different things are on here, this bird, these feathers, you know, they're on there for special reasons. They're markings that are put on there. Because in our teachings it says that the uh, birds are closer to the Great Spirit or the Creator. And when we put these on here, we're asking those birds to hear the music we play, to hear that and to take that music to the Creator as a offering or a prayer so that we might be blessed or whoever we're thinking of when we use the flute. So these are uh, some of the special parts of <clears throat> why these flutes are so important in uh, our traditional life and our traditional culture. But as I was uh, getting older and uh, being all these other things that I was being, an electrician and all these other parts of my uh, life out there, those this part was stronger and it pulled me towards learning about our culture and about the spiritual part of things. So every chance I get, I'm usually out into the, to the woods and out by the lake. You might hear the lake in the background a little bit, Lake Superior. And that, that's the lake where this island, which is called the Madeline Island, and one of the Apostle Islands is located. And that, I'm told from our history, is uh, the center of the Ojibwa Nation. It used to be the main home of our people after the great migration from the, the East Coast, long before Europeans came to this place. So this is a, one of the closest reservations to the, the island of the, the center of our nation, which was Maningwenekaning, which is o the Ojibwe for the island of the golden-breasted woodpecker, which is uh, Madeline Island. <clears throat> and that's why we hold that island so, uh, so important in our history because over that place it said that there's this light that guided us to this, this part of the country long ago, our people. And these are things that we learn about in our history from our elders, from the, their oral teachings that are handed down. All these traditional things that we're, we're given are uh, sometimes written in books, but most of it is handed from one generation to the next, including the uh, tradition of the, the native flutes that we carry. These are important parts of our history. They're important parts of our lives. If we live our lives in a way that it was taught to us, you know, it was intended for us. So this is uh, something that I think I like to share with people as I travel around. And it's why I consented to make tapes of the music. And those tapes that I've been a part of are a lot of nature sounds included on those because I was told that when I used the flute. 
they said that it should be made, the sound should be on the flute should be made with nature sounds, with sounds of other parts of nature, because that's where it came from, the flute itself, mm -hmm. traditional flutes. I have a number of them that I carry with me and that I have made, but this one that I have here today, this is, this is one that's been with, with me for quite a while and it's a real special one. That, you hear it on most of the recordings that I do. And uh, it's really important. And it's become kind of a part of me. So it's, it's uh, one that I would never consider you know, giving to someone else. It'll probably be buried with me when I, when I take what we call the jump, when I jump over that river and go into the spirit world, it'll probably go with me. Because that's what it is. It's a part of part of me. So I think that's maybe all that we we have to say about the flutes. And uh, I guess there's a lots of stories I could tell. I could sit and talk because I do that in schools and in other places that I go. I tell stories about our traditional ways. But I'm also a a musician who grew up in, in playing in the bars early in my years, playing country, playing rock, and uh, a lot of other types of music, bluegrass, being a lead guitarist, and so on. But this has become something that is more the main focus of my life, is our native culture and what it means to me and what we need to do as a people to share these things with other people. So I think that's probably all we need to uh, say about the uh, flute and uh, and I, maybe I'll, uh, <coughs> I'll play a little bit on the flute or... Yeah, and why don't you do it without glasses? Then without, they'll, get a, they'll get a look of you without, without glasses. glasses. Yeah. <laughs> as we age, we need these. <laughs> artificial uh, eyes so but I wear contacts at times and Which. And what was the that song? 
the songs that I play most of the time are songs that come when I'm playing them. Mm -hmm. They have no special uh, category there. They're songs that are communication with the spirits. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about the flute music, I talk about the communication of the spirits and what I was taught. And when we play the flute, we play those notes that are higher, which are called spirit notes. We bring those in and out and we create two songs. Two songs we try to create. One is to communicate down here with the humans and other life forms here, but the other one is to communicate with the spirits up above. So these two are, we try to bring those closer together and to create this balance that we need in our life. So the songs are most of the time spontaneous and they come as I'm playing them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, miigwetch.